Welcome back guys. We're doing truck stuff. Uh, so in the last episode we started peeling the bed sides off of this horrible ramp for the ramp truck and looking at what kind of mess is underneath it. And frankly, there's a lot of things under there that are wrong. So we're going to spend a lot of time fixing that, but there's only so much we can do at a time. So we're going to start with a couple of smaller projects to try and take small bites out of what is going to be a huge meal. So Cody's going to be helping me out, but the two things that we know for sure are we're going to be rounding off the front cab corner or the front bed corners so that they're round instead of being a hard corner and we got to do something here on the back because there's no real room for a license plate i don't like the tow receiver the taillights won't fit and there's going to have to be provisions for hanging the ramps so we went down to the metal supply got a bunch of stuff and we're able to go ahead and start cutting more things off and coming up with a plan the main thing here is we've got a lot of real estate where we can start playing with different ideas for where to put air tanks and air compressors and storage containers and all kinds of cool stuff. So trying to figure out what all we're going to put on here is going to be the next challenge. But we can't do all that right now, so we're going to start with the stuff we do now. Let's get to it. So first things first, I think I'm going to crawl underneath there and throw some jack stands underneath the frame. That way we can try and find something solid that we can measure off because right now, the bed flexes, the driveway and the garage are not on the same level, the cab moves, everything moves. So I think by putting jack stands underneath the frame, we might be able to try and get something that looks like level so that we can start measuring off of the ground. So I'm going to start with that. Hopefully that will give us a few less variables to work with. Well, how's that going? It's going good. Only burned through one blade so far. So far? So far. So what do we got? Uh, a lot of stuff. Essentially, we were able to paint a line across that's nice and straight, and there's there's spots like right here where the ramps were, where there was multiple layers of strap that he tried to put in for structure and whatever. But we've had a pretty good job of being able to cut this thing fairly straight, and hopefully, I mean, we have that much left. So hopefully, once we can get a new blade on, get through about this then maybe we can flex this thing off and break it off and we'll have a nice clean uh, rear end to work with. That's where it's welded to the end of the frame. We're going to have to do some saws all action. I don't remember exactly where I left off on Saturday, but I'll show you what I got done today. Spent a lot more time cutting off the trailer hitch receiver and it's making a lot of sense why it was crooked. Let me show you guys what's going on. So what I've done is I finished cutting off the rest of the back bumper and started making the new one. So you can see the shape I opted for here. It kind of flares up on the edges and then widens out in the middle. And hopefully that'll give me a little bit more beef down here to work with her uh, tail lights and all that stuff, but I won't be dragging on driveways. But you can see, so we've got our center line here, and uh, that center bar is not even remotely lined up with it. You can see where we're at with my bar to the right of the frame rail. I have my bar right on the frame rail here, and the distance between them being different on all of them as well. So because of all these measurements being so sporadic off of anything he did, I don't, don't think he owned a tape measure, I have to double check everything I do as I go. And that means that there's gonna be a few spots where I'm gonna have to be double checking and I'm gonna have to cut something loose. So I think I'm gonna be spending a lot more time tacking things in place and then going back and checking everything for square and level a bunch of times before I can actually weld anything. So that's kind of good, it's kind of annoying. I, I kind of like to lock down a project and let it be so I can move on. But in this case, there's gonna be a lot of mock-up before moving forward, just because I can't trust anything he's done. So it might be bad enough that I have to tack everything in place and then pull the truck out on the street, which is a little bit more level, and see if everything sits as it should. But that's a problem for another day. So tomorrow I'm gonna to get out here and I'm gonna try and get everything kind of situated and start working on tying in the sides a little bit and looking at where my reinforcements are gonna be for the trailer hitch. So all that and more to come. All right, so this thing showed up. Obviously there's a big heavy duty trailer hitch receiver. Um, I went with a 12 inch because I'm gonna be trying to shoot further back down here. I'm gonna shoot past all this and I'm gonna be tying in further back because I still wanna I still want to retain my tow rating if I need to tow a, a larger trailer. So I left myself a lot of room on the end there so I can slide past it and I can reinforce to the frame wherever I see necessary. But for now, I'm going to find a good spot where I can uh, zero it out and make sure that it's nice and flat 
and try and get it tacked into place so that once the saw comes off, I can do a final welding and then I'll tie it into the frame later. All right, so we got our trailer hitch tacked in place. It should be level. I uh, had a discrepancy with my level today and uh, we'll get a new one tomorrow. But I was able to start looking at this and I got this fairly straight so we can put our sheet metal on it and it'll be actually nice and straight vertically. Drop my plumb bob here to see how bad this was. It looks like we're a little out up here and this is stuck to the outside of what is otherwise still good. So I'll have to cut that loose and either move it or replace it. But at least we know that from this end up to the back of the wheel is fairly straight to perpendicular to the ground. So I like that. I'm gonna try and get the same thing happening on the other side since the other side's also cut loose at the end. So I did the same thing over here. Got it kind of pulled in nice and square. Got it tacked in place. Uh, that's sitting there where it's gonna be. What I started doing is going through and stripping off all the tack welds that he had on this material because I'm gonna reuse this section of material. This is gonna get removed and this piece above the wheel is gonna get removed. But other than that, so you can see is he basically butted his sheet metal up and then tacked it every few inches. And then he just bondoed from the sheet metal up to the top. So as you're grinding through, you're grinding a weld and then a layer of bondo and then a weld and then a layer of bondo. So it's just kind of a mess, slow and tedious. I'll do the other section of truck tomorrow, but that'll allow me to salvage all that material, which is gonna save me a small fortune with the cost of steel right now. So it feels pretty good. That's actually gonna get mostly reused. And then I gotta go in and cut out these hokey uh, ramp holders that he had in there. But pretty good progress, a little bit of time. All right, it's Thursday and I gotta come up with a plan of attack. So uh, there's so much to do, I can just kind of pick a spot and start. So I think I'm gonna work on trying to cut some of this out. So some of this has gotta go, all of this has gotta go. And I've been cutting and grinding above this fuel tank, which is a little uncomfortable. And I plan on doing something a little different with that. I basically wanna run dual fuel tanks. That's a 20 gallon tank. And that gives me a range of optimistically like 200 miles. So I think I'm gonna need a second tank as an auxiliary tank. And I got a plan for that, but I need to get all this stuff out of here and start cutting some of that material off. I can't put new material on until that is removed. So I think I'm gonna start trying to do that today. Now that I got most of it cut out, I can actually show you guys underneath the bed. Now, for most guys that know what they're looking at from a fab perspective, this is gonna be horrifying. The amount of sketchy going on under there is next level. I'm trying to do my best to fix it and make it as right as I can without having to basically scrap it and start all over. So let me show you what's going on and I'll kind of show you what my thoughts are. Basically, the idea here is cut off what doesn't need to be there and gusset the snot out of everything that's going to stay. All right, you'll have to forgive me. My light flickers in here. So you see what they did is they went ahead and they, they cut the frame back here and then they extended it out with a big heavy piece of C-channel. And that'll be a common theme is that C-channel. So that's the same thing that's holding up the horizontal supports is this heavy C-channel. And that's actually what's back here and back there as well, this heavy C channel. Now the problem that I run into the most is that most of these areas have not been welded. The pipes have been stuck in place and there's a couple of stitch welds here and there, but largely it's not welded, which the amount of strength lost there is incredible. So you see the same thing here where a lot of our material is not actually welded to anything. The other problem is when you start looking at stuff like this, so this is the outrigger that comes out. Now this wasn't tied to anything. This didn't have any structure coming down from over here. It was just holding up the sheet metal. And see that once again, it's like it got a little weld right here. It's hard to see because it's all filthy. But uh, that's pretty much it. There's a little tack weld right there and that's it. And that's where you're gonna have the actual load of the car sitting on top of. So no wonder the sheet metal's bowing in so many places up top. Uh, let's scoot back a little bit. So you can see 
right here underneath this C channel where they've got this square tube notched out and they didn't even weld it. They just notched it out. And you can see that there's a gap right there. So it's just notched out and stuck there. And even just welding that would add a lot of strength there that currently doesn't exist. Uh, going back over all these welds is obviously gonna happen because I can't trust any other welding. So here's where the frame has been extended with a big C channel. And uh, I'm gonna have to go through and double check all that from the inside. I can't really get to it from where I'm at. So that'll have to be a little later after I've cleaned up the ground a little bit on both sides. Uh, going to the back, it's pretty much all the same. But what's really interesting here is you notice this is a bed support for directly above the axle, which arguably is gonna be the most load. And they were worried about the leaf spring hitting it. So they just notched it out. So you're talking one piddly weld, one, there's there's no weld here. There is a weld there. So it's basically being supported by a one inch weld on one side of that and that piddly thing. Now, knowing this thing was on the roadway is terrifying. Knowing that you might have driven next to it is also terrifying. But with the cost of material right now, I have to try and reuse as much of this as possible. There's two contributing factors that are gonna make that allowable. A, I'm a good welder. I can weld this up and I, I can guarantee the strength of it based on what I am going to be doing. Secondly, I'm gonna be gusseting and reinforcing everything underneath there to the best of my abilities to the point where whatever I've left is just gonna be extra. I'm gonna reinforce all that stuff to the point where I have faith in it and I believe in overkill. So those two things are gonna make it so I can move forward with what's there and I'll keep you guys up to date as I start cutting things and making it better. Now that I got this side kind of knocked back, I'm gonna try and cut off this side's ramp holder and then I'm gonna start stripping that side of the bed rail. I'll probably call it a night. So let's see how much I can get done. It's Friday night. That means tonight's project is try to make the driver's side look like the passenger side and drink beer. So basically where I left off last night, I got everything removed from this side that doesn't need to be there. And I can go ahead and I can start trying to add material back into place. On this side, I still have a bunch of stuff stuck on there. So I got my ramp supports down there. I got that box up at the front. That's kind of a mess. And then the entire rail is covered in tack welds and bondo. I can't start thinking about how to allocate the space until I get everything out of the way and reinforce the backbone. So I'm going to start by just trying to cut everything off. Uh, you guys already saw what that looks like on this side, so I'm not going to show you that again. So I'll catch up with you guys at the end of the night and see how much I got done. Wish me luck. All right. I tap. I'm out of energy. I got what I wanted done. So here's what we got. I managed to get all of the tack welds and body filler cut off of the material I'm going to reuse and I managed to get everything I didn't want underneath here cut out. That stuff's all gone and I made some orders to try and refill that space with something a little bit more appropriate for what I want this truck to look like in the end. Uh, some better storage solutions. Now with that being said I'm probably gonna have to wait a few days for those to arrive and that'll probably be on the next video but on this side I can start laying in my framework based on what I know about this side and over here, I already have the fuel system that I need to reallocate space for. So I can start working on trying to get everything cut out and put in place so that I can put the fuel system back and close in this side. So maybe tomorrow, that's where I'll start. I don't know, that's a tomorrow problem. For tonight, that's enough. It's Saturday. I'm working on a, a quick, easy project today because I'm not really in the mood to crawl under there and start bracing up the frame just yet. So I'm working on a smaller project and that'll probably be the end of this video. So what I got going on is on the corners of the bed, they had a hard 90 right here. And I literally just came out from behind it and then hard 90. And I, I didn't like the aesthetic of that. It looked kind of, I don't know, half-ass really. I just stuck the corner there. So I figured there was room for improvement. So what I've done is I've took some three inch thick wall DOM and I've quartered it. And I'm going to take this quartered section and these are going to become the new corners. And then I'll just make it so it's got a nice rounded edge on it. And I, I feel like that is going to work a lot better with the shape of the body, make everything flow a little bit better and look uh, a little more intentional. But so I'll be working on that today and probably start taking some measurements for what I'm going to need to go ahead and make and buy so I can start getting the material in place to reinforce the frame stuff. But uh, that's gonna be pretty much it for this one. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already so you can follow along as we start putting things back. But 
Wackadoo, out.